Yes, no? Yes. This is 1 comma 0, 2 comma 0, 3 comma 0, negative 4 comma 0, right? So if we set this equal to, that's like your y. You, you notice that for a second, right? That, that's your y, really. I mean, we just call it f of x, but that, that's y. If we have 0 equal to this, it's going to give us where we cross our x-axis. Not even if you're with me on that. Okay, so for x-intercepts, we're going to set the equation equal to 0 or, and, and solve it. So y-intercept, very easy. It's just a number. X-intercept, a little bit more work. Let's see how we do this. The quadratic e equation right here is going to be x squared minus 4x minus 5. And we're going to set it equal to 0. You see where the 0 is coming from? 0 is coming from the fact that I'm going to find out where y, or f of x, is equal to 0. That's going to give me my x-intercepts. Hey, does that look familiar? Does that look familiar to you? Oh yeah. We've been doing that since chapter 7. We know, actually before that, we have a couple ways we're supposed to look at this. What's the first thing we should do to try to solve that equation? How long should you spend trying to factor? And if you can't do it in 10 seconds, what else are you supposed to do? Great, so now you have two options. The quadratic formula will work every time, but factoring is often quicker if you can do it. You guys ready to try it? Let's see if we can factor it. Of course, we'll do a diamond problem. We'll spend 10 seconds trying to do that. Were you able to factor it? I'm getting like minus 5 minus 1. I'm sorry, minus 5 plus 1. Good thing I'm not getting the other one, right? That'd be wrong. Now, are you done on that? You done on that? What else are you going to do? Yeah, so don't forget the things that we know how to do already. So we're going to do x minus 5 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. If we solve these, we get x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. Okay, I need to show of hands how many people feel okay getting down to that far. So really, let's, let's look at what we're doing. Okay, just a simple recap from last time. First thing we do, we make sure we have a quadratic that's x squared, quadratic function. That's what that means. We find the vertex first. That's the first thing you got to do. Because sometimes on this step, we'll change some signs around. I'll show you that in about three examples. Find our vertex first. That's negative b over 2a. It's just a formula. You find that from your, your coefficients of negative b, 2 times a. We figure out our x coordinate first. We plug that back in to figure out the y coordinate. That gives me the point that is either going to be the lowest or the highest point of my parabola. You with me on this so far? Then what we do is we find our y-intercept. That's the easy one. It's just that constant number. It's always going to be at the back end of your function. It's with the sign. That's what you, you have out of that. So here we got negative 5. Lastly, the very last thing you do, you find your x-intercepts, if you have any. You don't necessarily have to have them in every parabola. You could be above or below the x-axis. You could be right on the x-axis, like that. This one, are, you, are we not crossing the x-axis or are we crossing and coming back? What do you think? How many solutions did you get? Two. Are you going to be able to plot those on that line? Yeah. That means you cross that parabola, I'm sorry, you cross the x-axis and you come back at it. Does that make sense to you? Also, one more thing. Is our parabola going to be upward facing or <coughs> downward facing? And how would you find that out? Upward. And how are you finding that out? Oh, good. So we look right here. Remember that A? That A tells you whether you're upward facing or downward facing. Also tells you whether it's going to be a, a narrow parabola or a wide parabola. That still holds true. That's still true for us. So here it's a normal shaped parabola. There's, there's no number besides one. It's positive. It should be upward facing. So we should get some graph that looks like this, somewhere out of that. And it's good to think through that before you actually start your problem. So we'd be thinking about that. We know what we're supposed to get. Let's see if we in fact get it. Firstly, are you guys okay getting to this far on this problem? Okay, so last step, we're almost there. You can graph it. How we graph it is the same exact order that we did our steps in. Make these graphs nice though, make them nice and neat.
hey, if you can plot points, you can graph these parabolas. So let's look back at our vertex. What's our vertex, ladies and gentlemen? Two. What was it? Two. Two. Plot that point right now on your graph. So two, negative nine, that's down here. Hey, just thinking back, should this be the lowest or the highest point of my graph? Lowest. lowest. Because it's upward facing, you're right, that should be the lowest point of my graph. Now, the next thing you do, you plot your y-intercept. So we're going in order, step one, two, three, all the time, one, two, three. What's our y-intercept? So from here, am I going to go up five or down five, or left five or right five? What's my y-intercept mean? Down. So one, two, three, right here? Yes, no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I counted five. One, two, three, five. I tried to count five. Yeah. If this is five, is this right? Yeah. Okay, good. This is down five, like negative five. Y is negative five, so the y axis go down to negative five. Are you, are you okay with those ones? Yeah. I'm not trying to trick you here, I'm just trying to make sure that you, you get this. Yeah. What is a y intercept? What is it? Y intercept tells you where you cross the y axis. So this graph must cross this axis right at that point. If you have it below there or above there, it's wrong. Then you need to have it crossing exactly at that point. Are you with me on that? So the, the, you're going to be able to graph these with only four points. Vertex, y-intercept, which you will always have, maybe even two points. Vertex, y-intercept, which you, you must always have. Then you're also going to need the x-intercepts if they exist. So are you okay with the vertex? Raise your hand if you're okay with the vertex. How about the y-intercept? Are you okay with the y-intercept? Yes, no? Yes, no? Okay. The last thing we graph is the x-intercepts. Now, you might not have x-intercepts all the time. If you were reversed this way, upside down, you wouldn't have any x-intercepts. We're going this way, so we must have some x-intercepts. The factoring gave it to you. If the factoring hadn't worked, the quadratic equation, the quadratic formula, would have given it to you. What are my x-intercepts? I want you to plot those right now on your x-axis. So y equals says you're going to the y-axis, negative 5. You okay with that one? x equals says you're going to the x-axis. Put those points on there. Where's negative 1, left or right from my finger? How many? Yeah, that's negative 1. Where's 5? Right. It's, it, it's a 5, yeah, it's a 5. Is it up here at 5? No. Yeah. That would be y, right? No, we're talking about x. <clears throat> hey, is it important for you to know how to factor? What if you get your signs wrong? Is this probably going to look right? No. no. If you get your signs wrong, you know what? You're going to have, neg you're gonna have uh, 1 and negative 5. You're going to be like, is your problem supposed to look like this? No. No, unless you want a really pretty base. Kind of pretty, but that's not a parabola. <laughs> Hold some flowers. That's my flower. <laughs> Good thing I'm not a florist. No, no, no. We got to make sure we can factor because that factory was really the reason why you factor should do this. That's it to get down to this this far to make sure you can find your intercepts here. So can you draw me the parabola from this picture? Do you see it? Can you see how, visually, can you see how it's going to look? Yeah. Yeah. Here's what you do. You graph the side of the y-intercept first. The reason is because this has more points, right? This is a little bit more accurate than this side. This has just two points. This has one, two, three points on this side. You're going to do this side first, connect all three dots with a nice, smooth curve, not straight lines, okay, parabola's a smooth curve. And then, because these things are symmetrical, do the same thing on the other side. So here we'll go, nice smooth curve. Isn't that pretty? Right? Not bad. And then we're going to draw the same curve on the other side. Try to make the bottom of this curve, it's not a V, okay? it doesn't come to a sharp point, it's a nice curve. And then of course you label this with your name of your function, f of x, and you're done. Would you raise your hand and feel okay with this so far? Okay, so vertex, no problem. Y-intercept, got it. X-intercepts, that's stuff we've done before. It's awesome. We just have to plot them on the graph when we're done. Let's try, would you like to try one more together? We'll do one or two more together. I'll show you uh, one unique problem that we're going to make easier. And then we will uh, have you do one of your own and be done. With our section.
By the way, it doesn't always have to give it to you as f of x. It could very well give it to you as just y equals. Is that going to change what you do? No. Now, y and f of x mean the same exact thing. Let's go ahead and go through this step by step. We're going to move a little bit quicker, though, this time because we've already kind of had the, the concept down. So first thing, uh, what is your first step? I've left this on the board, but what is your very first step? What are you going to do? Okay, vertex, great, okay. So negative b over 2a, what I'd like you to do right now, I'll give you about five seconds, fill out the formula. You don't have to do all the math, we'll do that together, but fill out the formula correctly. Negative b over 2a. Firstly, what is your a? One. It is one. What's your b? Negative two. What's your c? <coughs> you don't actually use that here until the y-intercept, but you should know it. Did you all get that on your paper? Negative, negative 2 over 2 times 1? Okay. And then over here we got a question mark. We go, okay, I don't know how to do that yet. Let's do this math together. How much is negative, negative 2, folks? Two. So remember, we're plugging it in without doing any math, and then we start doing it little by little. 2 over, two. Two. oh, that's kind of nice. So we're going to get 1 comma something, 1 comma some y coordinate over there. Did you all get 1 on yours? What do you do with that one? Okay, do that right now. See if you can do it. Plug in that one and see what my y coordinate is going to give me. So you should have one squared minus two times one minus three, and that's going to give you your vertex. One comma something. It's a point. That's why we draw it as a point to make sure we, we have that. If you're giving me just a vertex of one, well, you're not going to be able to graph that. But you have to have a point to graph. The x and the y intercepts are, are unique because they, you know they're on the x axis or y axis already. That's why you can have one point there, one value. But for the vertex, you need both. What is one minus two minus three? How much is that? How many people found the negative four out of that? Okay, good. So we got our point. Next up, we're going to look at the y-intercept. So y-intercept right now, man, this is the quickest part. This is the awesome part. Everyone should get this one right. Go ahead and find your y-intercept right now. Don't say it loud, but write it on your paper, OK? Do the y-intercept now. What's the y-intercept here, folks? It's kind of nice, right? Just that constant off to the back end with the sign. By the way, should our parabola be upward facing or downward facing here? Can you tell me that? Upward. Should it be narrow, wide, or normal? Normal. Normal. Good. Upward facing, normal looking parabola is what we should get out of that. Now, the y-intercepts are easy. X-intercepts take a little bit more work. What are you supposed to do with your x-intercepts? How are you supposed to find your x-intercepts? Set what equal to zero? Okay, go ahead and do that now. See if you can factor. If you can, great. Solve it all the way down for your x-intercepts. Go ahead and do that. 